And we've also said the narrow band just would not get us there. But a wide brand air fuel ratio sensor will use a narrow band along with an O2 pump cell to measure air fuel ratio. Remember, it's going to interact with a PCM. This is an interactive sensor. It's not a static sensor like the old narrow band. First of all, we're going to look at this. Wide band sensors are made up of two different sensors sandwiched together. They're sandwiched together at this shared electrode you see there in purple. If you look to the right, you see a call out saying the oxygen pump cell is pointing to two purple electrodes. The narrow band, narrow range sensor, is pointing to a yellow and a blue, light blue, whatever you want to call it, cell. This is a narrow band cell down there. We're going to have to talk about how these work. We've got something else unusual here. We've got a sample chamber. Notice the main exhaust gas in dark green is going by and only a small little portion is coming through an opening into this sample chamber. What we're going to do is utilize a small sample chamber to sample the gas in the exhaust. Make changes to the AFR sensor to correct for those changes and those corrections will tell us exactly what we need to do. So the sample in this exhaust chamber is going to determine what we do next. Now the bottom sensor is a narrow band sensor. It measures gas in the sample chamber. It's going to be using a shared return. If you'll notice the middle has a nurse, retur nurse cell return reference and current ramp. These are reference grounds, reference lobes. The narrow band cell output is the purple arrow coming off of our blue. That is going to read the gas in the sample cell. When the gas in the sample cell is perfect, lambda of 1, 14.7 to 1, whatever you want to call it, we will have an output signal of 0.45 volts. Now the PCM is going to use this signal. It's very important because it has an oxygen O2 pump. Your arrow on the right is pointing to the O2 pump. Those two purple electrodes are an O2 pump. The PCM can add or absorb oxygen from this sam sample chamber or cell by controlling the current flow to the oxygen pump. Now the oxygen pump is really a narrow band cell, but what we have utilizing here we've never used before, passing a current flow through the cell will cause it to either add or absorb oxygen. Before we simply looked at the voltage. So what we have is surrounding this small sample cell is an oxygen pump. We can change the gas concentration in this small cell without changing the gas concentration out in the main exhaust flow. Main exhaust flow is not going to change until the PCM has decided how rich or how lean the mixture is. This is merely a way of determining how far the sample has moved from a lambda of 1 and because it's a small sample the current pump can overcome any deficiencies in oxygen for rich mixtures or any excess oxygens for lean mixtures. Let me say that again. The PCM's current pump, because of the small sample, can overcome a deficiency of oxygen on a rich mixture and bring the sample cell back to a lambda 1. Or it can remove some of the excess oxygen from this small sample to bring it back to a lambda of 1. It's a current pump. It's going to change O2. Now this chart shows different values. At the top, the magenta scale, we have to pump in a positive 2.25 milliamps to correct for a lambda of 2 in the main exhaust flow. At the bottom end of the scale, the magenta or purple has to have a minus 1.5 amps to correct for a lambda of 0.8 in the exhaust. Once we have this current flow at that level, it will cause the mixture inside the sample cell to return to a lambda of 1. That tells the PCM exactly how far we have to move. This is not controlling the main exhaust flow. This is just controlling a small sample in the chamber. 
and not the main exhaust flow. The main exhaust flow will be controlled by the short-term and long-term fuel trim. The current flow is going to tell the PCM how much to change short-term, long-term fuel trim. Let's look at the construction. A narrowband O2 sensor is mounted at the bottom of the sample cell. Remember, these are two pieces sandwiched together. Let's see how this works. This is known as a diffusion chamber. We call it a sample chamber because it's easier to understand. Because it has a very small gap, we're going to be able to look at just small samples of the main exhaust flow. And it can be used to signal the PCM data about the contents of the sample cell. We bring in some rich mixture, let's say. If a rich mixture enters the sample cell, it will increase voltage or start to increase voltage on the narrow band reference. It's at 0.45 volts. As soon as the PCM sees 0.45 volts starting to increase because we've introduced a rich mixture. When a rich mixture enters the sample cell, it's going to increase the voltage on this reference. The PCM is going to react. The PCM reacts to changes in this voltage to pump oxygen into the sample cell. Remember, we have a rich mixture. We have too little oxygen. So the PCM is going to pump oxygen into the sample cell to return the signal back to 0.45 volts at lambda. The amount of current tells the PCM how rich we are, and then it will go and change short-term and long-term. Right now, we're just reacting between the PCM and the mixture in the cell to find out how far we're off. This oxygen pump is mounted on top of it. Let's get back to how it's going to function. It's going to operate the, the oxygen pump to keep the sample cell at a lambda of 1. It's going to use positive current flow to absorb O2. Positive current flow absorbing O2, that'll be used when we have a lean mixture. Lean mixture is an excess of O2. Negative current flow will be used to release oxygen into the fusion chamber. Remember, this is called diffusion chamber or sample cell and has a very small gap. So it's easy to cancel out this small amount of gas coming in by pumping oxygen in or absorbing oxygen. We pump it in when it's rich, we absorb it when it's lean. It will use negative current flow to generate oxygen to correct for our rich condition we're talking about in this example. So just remember the actions of the PCM is just controlling the AFR inside the sample cell. It's going to use a, it's a very small sample so we can do that. We're not changing the main exhaust yet. This gets confused when we talk about bringing the sample cell back to a lambda of 1. Remember we're just checking to see what it takes to bring it back to a lambda of 1. Let's look at that. At the right, let's utilize this chart with numbers of what's everywhere. It's at a lambda of 0.8. That's too rich. We have too little oxygen. The bottom left, we have the O2 pump current. It needs to pump in a minus 1.5 milliamps. When we do that, it will return the sample back to a lambda of 1. Now the PCM is going to use this current flow to calculate the AFR in the main exhaust and then change fuel controls to bring it back and once the fuel controls have changed when short term and long term are adjusted to bring the main flow back to zero we now have zero current flow everything is fine with zero current flow we're not pumping it in we're not taking it out the main exhaust flow is AFR1 the sample cell is one we do nothing and this is what we see frequently in this. This does not have to hunt around. It goes directly to what it has to do, tells us what to do, changes short term just like the oxygen sensor. Change short term, then the short term gradually changes long term. So you have to understand how fuel control works to understand how the wideband air fuel ratio works. It is this current flow that we're pumping in there on the interactivity on the purple line, magenta line, to bring the sample cell back to an air for one. Then we go back, change short term, long term, bring the main fuel flow back, and then we have zero current flow. So what's going to be happen when the main exhaust flow and the sample cells are at zero? The PCM will zero current flow to the oxygen pump. We'll neither add nor subtract oxygen. This is how the total package works. We've got to change the main flow. Then we'll get back to both main exhaust flow and sample being one. Then we do nothing. The PCM neither adds nor subtracts oxygen. The reference stays at 0.545. 
and everything's fine. In the example we just used, it took minus 1.5 milliamps to add enough oxygen to the sample chamber to overcome the lack of oxygen in the sample cell caused by a rich mixture. The current pump at the bottom shows us how much current. The rich mixture arrow says this is how rich we were. We could measure that richness by pumping oxygen into this small sample cell, bringing it back to zero, and that's the secret to wideband. The PCM will vary current flow until the main exhaust leans out to a lambda of one, and then everybody's going to be happy. Oh, we were looking at a chart, now we're looking at the construction of the sensor. It's going to return this diffusion chamber, this sample cell, to a stoichiometric or lambda of one. And remember, the diffusion gap is very small. It's a small orifice between the exhaust and sample cell. That's the secret to making this work. That small orifice lets us change only a small amount of gas with an oxygen pump in order to measure how rich or lean the main flow of gas is. So this gets to be somewhat confusing. Go back and review it as many times as you need. But the basic current flow will go back to zero after the PCM has made short-term, long-term fuel control corrections to one, then everything gets back to one. If we have a lean condition, just the opposite. It's going to require positive current flow to remove oxygen from the diffusion chamber and return the diffusion chamber back to a lambda of 1. In this example, our main exhaust flow on the right has of our lambda of 1.4. The current pump on the left bottom, positive 1.15 milliamps. That's the current flow required to return the sample cell back to a lambda of 1. Works just the opposite. We're going to use positive current flow. The short term and long term fuel trim are then adjusted to bring the main fuel flow back to 1. When it gets back, the lean mixtures are corrected. If the lean mixture is measured, the narrow band, the PCM will use positive current flow to absorb it. The O2 in the sample cell, make the measurement of current flow required, make the corrections in long term, short term. In this example, it used 1.15 milliamps positive to absorb excess oxygen from the lean mixture. That enabled it to use short term, long term to bring it back to one. Once we get it back to one, we re-zero, main exhaust is at one, the sample cells at one, we have zero current flow. Now, the sample chamber with the small gas flow is the key to making all this work. We cannot stress enough. Because this diffusion gap, the sample gap, is small, the current pump can easily return the sample chamber back to a lambda of 1 even though the exhaust gases are different. That current flow is going to be used by the PCM to modify long term, short term. We've tried to stress this enough time because it really gets confusing. But this is the key right here, this chart. It's going to use current flow as an indication of AFR in the main flow, then use short-term and long-term to make corrections.